had a really crazy experience. Hey, my thrifty friends, Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a good one. I have 23 sales over $30 and I don't even know, like there's lots of stuff to cover today. So we're just going to dive right in. I have three platforms we're going to go through. And then at the end, I'm going to kind of give you some tips and things that I've been changing and how it's working. So I just need to start with, I broke my benchmark. I, I don't like giving out numbers anymore because I feel like without all the details, without full context, um, they really mean nothing. But I can say I have surpassed my highest benchmark this week and I feel like the changes that I'm making are like really starting to work. So stay tuned to the end, we'll go over those. All right, let's just dive right in. First sale is a pair of Cotton Ginny plus size jean shorts. These were in a size 18. I have had these forever. It just took me so long to get them listed. I found them in my dad's pile like two weeks ago, just trying to get all these shorts listed and they sold for $30, probably a little bit lower than what I thought they were gonna sell for, but I'm taking it. We're heading into summer. I am not holding on to shorts right now. If someone makes me a reasonable offer, they can take them. Next sale was a vintage handmade 80s Aztec jean vest. It is so unique. I actually did an Instagram reel. I'm going to pop it up of Jeff modeling it for me when I found it. I've had this listed since fall, so it definitely was a really slow burner for a sale. But I felt like it just needed to find the right person. It was very unique. I love the tapestry kind of blanket. Has like a Western kind of look to it. I don't know, it had all the vibes. It definitely held the value that I felt like it had as a unique item. Cause you're not gonna find another vest like this one. Next up is a pair of North Face black convertible hiking pants. These were in a size four. I have been scooping up all the hiking pants that I can find. These ones sold for $60. I feel like as long as they're in good condition and they're relatively current style and I would go on rise, like definitely making sure they're a mid rise uh, that I don't know. I would I would really recommend looking, going on to some websites that sell North Face or hiking pants and look at the trending styles. And then when you're out, try and make sure they're relatively current. Uh, these were a little bit of an older style, but they were so cool because they converted into shorts. And I think that's really what they had going for them. They were also black. Black hiking pants are pretty easy to sell. Next up was a bundle. This is a two-piece bundle and it sold for $120. In the bundle was a pair of Birkenstock Mayari strappy leather sandals. These were in a size five. They were pretty small and I was kind of apprehensive when I got home. I think the, the price sticker on them said they were a size seven and then when I got home and looked at them, I'm like, these are not a size seven. So definitely taking a chance on them because they're Birkenstocks and they were in next to new condition. I felt that they would hold some value. The other item that sold was a pair of Lululemon Movement 7 8 tights. And this was in Everlux. These tights actually had damage to the knee and I had put it in the listing. I took pictures of it. Before she purchased it, I even messaged her in the bundle and I said, you are aware the leggings have damage. I just want to, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. And she said, yeah, that's okay. So she was good with it. I don't know. Maybe she's turning these into shorts. Maybe she's cropping them. Not too sure, but that bundle sold for $120. Next up is a Club Monocle neutral single breasted jacket. This was in a size six and it sold for $40. I'm really happy with this sale. I did source it quite a few months ago and I paid about $10 for it. I felt like it was gonna sell for a lot more, but I couldn't find a good stock photo. I couldn't find a stock photo at all. And I feel like for Club Monaco, they definitely do really good when you have a stock photo. I think I've probably declined some reasonable offers just thinking I was gonna get more. So this one went through for 40 and I accepted it. Happy to just kind of let it go and get that money back into my inventory. All right, next up was a pair of Denim Forum, the Yoko High Rise Skinny Jeans. These were in a size 26. They sold for $50. I'm always on the lookout for Denim Forum. I think as long as they're not like that super skinny that's all distressed, you know, kind of like that style from five years ago, four or five years ago, as long as they're a little bit newer than that, I'm probably gonna grab them and obviously that my cost of goods is below $20, but this is a brand that I will pay up for 
because they have that resale value there. Next is a pair of Levi's 501 tapered leg crop ripped jeans. These sold for $64. I have quite a few Levi's, I think, in sales, and I've been on the hunt for them. Definitely 501s, wedgies, straight leg jeans. Those are the three styles I'm looking for. And I, again, I will almost always pick up Levi's if they are priced probably even up to $25 because I see value in them. Even if I paid $20 for these jeans, my earnings on this would be $46. That puts me at $26 profit, and I've only had them listed for like two weeks. Levi's right now, for me, I'm finding, depending on the style and with those three styles, they definitely have a good sell-through rate. They're selling within four weeks, and some of these are selling in like less than one or two weeks. I feel like everyone kind of knows about Levi's. It's just that brand that you don't always find you know, out in the wild. Next up is a Free People beige cotton duster cardigan sweater. This is in an extra small and it sold for $52. Funny story on this sweater, it actually sold like a month ago and there was damage to the sleeve where it looks like there was maybe like in the knit, it kind of one loop maybe let go and it looks a little bit looser. I had missed it when I listed it. So right away she sent a picture, she said it's damaged. I didn't even deny it. I was like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll accept it back. I must have missed that, right? And I think she paid $56 for the cardigan. So it came back. I had it like sitting in my room probably for a month. And I was like, I should relist this and just kind of take pictures of it. So I took the old listing, relisted it, took a picture of the damage to the sleeve and actually priced it almost exactly the same because I was like, this is still a really nice sweater. It's not very noticeable. I think the lady was just more upset because the damage wasn't disclosed in the first purchase, which was my bad. So this time I just put the damage in the listing and listed again. So not really surprised that it sold for $52. I feel like oversized free people sweaters, especially a neutral tone, are a really hot item right now. People are looking for them. They're very summer friendly and they transition into fall very well. All right, next up is a pair of Banana Republic barrel jeans. Uh, these are in a size 27 and they sold for $42. I grabbed these probably like a month ago and I, I don't know why, but I looked at them and I thought they were a wide leg and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna grab these. I got home, I'm pretty sure in the thrift haul, I was like, why did I grab these? I never sell Banana Republic. But now I'm like questioning, should I be picking up Banana Republic? Do you sell Banana Republic? Do you enjoy selling it? Is it one of your bread and butter brand? <laughs> bread and butter brands? Drop in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. I think I'm gonna keep my eye out for current styles in this brand. All right, next up is an oversized blue fleece zip up vest. This was in a size large and it sold for $38. I've had this vest since winter. I actually thrifted two of them. There was one in this color and one in like a dark burgundy. Took a long time to sell. I thought these were gonna sell really quickly. They're perfect to like layer over a hoodie. All right, this next one is actually one of my favorites. So it's a white crochet scoop neck maxi dress. It's in a size large. I sourced this probably two or three weeks ago and it's just gorgeous. Like it's not, it's not a mass produced dress, that's for sure. And I would say it's made out of like a cotton natural fiber. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I got Lena to try it on for sizing. It was quite big on her. So I was like, okay, this will comfortably fit a size large. Here's the kicker. I paid like $9 for it, which I thought was totally awesome and picking it up more for like the style and the boho and the it's almost like a hand knit yeah it kind of hit all those factors for me and i listed it for a hundred dollars she sent me an offer for 90 and i accepted it i'm happy i feel like this is the value for the dress this is what i saw the value in it practically a full price sale so that was really cool pretty newly listed, still looking for like those summery, boho, even cottage core dresses right now. Next up is a pair of Lululemon on the fly pants. These were in a size four. Uh, I sold the pink pair last week and I had grabbed them both at the same time. These ones sold for $68, a couple dollars more than the other pair. And I think the pink pair was a size two. I'm looking for these. I love these Lululemon on the fly pants. I feel like they do really well. They're still holding good value. Sizes do not matter with these pants. These are still in high demand. Next up was a very 
great sale, kind of surprising for me as well. It was a pair of a Goldie 90s mid-rise loose jeans. These were in a size 24. So what surprised me was they were quite a small size, but they're that wide leg kind of current style. I would say they're maybe two or three years old and they sold for $180. I actually paid up for these and I paid, I think $30 for them, which I felt was pretty high. I was hoping to get like 100, 120, but when I got home and I searched the comps on them, I was like, oh no, these are pretty current. So I listed them at 200 and then was gonna be open to reasonable offers. I didn't even send an offer to her. She's, she offered me this, she offered me $180, which if you've bought a Goldie, I mean, in Canadian dollars, that's probably, it's probably already $150 off the full retail price. So she's still got a deal and she's happy with it. I'm happy with it. That was a good sale and very unusual. I do not come across current a Goldie jeans like ever. So that was probably one of my favorite sales of the week. Next up was a pair of Levi's rib cage straight leg jeans. These were an ankle cut. They sold for $64 and they were in a size 26. This was a little bit of a surprising sale for me. I grabbed these because they were Levi's, they were wide leg, and I was like, yeah, these will do really well. But when I started to search comps on Posh on them, they weren't that great. Like, like the comps were like $25 to $35. Now I know that this is probably like a five, yeah, probably a five-year-old style, but I didn't think the comps were gonna be that low. So I was like, nope, I'm gonna find a good stock photo. I'm going to take good pictures and I'm gonna list it high open to reasonable offers. So I think I had this one listed at maybe 80 or $85 and I probably sent her a 20% offer, which she accepted. Quick flip, like I just listed that a couple days ago. So Levi's really hot seller right now. I'm, I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy that I'm selling jeans instead of shorts because jeans have more dollar value than shorts and I'm probably paying the same amount of money when I'm sourcing for Levi's shorts as I am Levi's jeans right now, which is just crazy, but that's just how it is. Next up is a pair of vintage 80s high-waisted baggy tapered leg jeans. These were in a size 14. They sold for $45. I think I had them listed about 80 and she sent me this offer. I've been sitting on the jeans for probably a month, month and a half. I don't really like to sit on stuff. So as long as she's sending me a reasonable offer, I'm pretty sure I paid about five bucks for them. That's a pretty good profit. So I'm going to take it get them out of my inventory and that way I can reinvest it. See, this is the kind of like the name of the game. You have to sell things so that you can purchase new things, right? And sometimes the things that we buy, we think that we think are gonna sell really well, don't. And if I'm sitting on something for more than a month, I'm gonna take whatever offers I'm getting. I mean, within reason, I do counter too. I'm not afraid to counter someone if it's lower than what I think the item is worth. And then just, uh, Get that money and then try and find those items that are going to sell quickly and for a good dollar value. All right, next up is an Aritzia Wilfred Sabine white floral dress. This was in a size small. I questioned when I grabbed this because it is an older style and I'm kind of on the fence sometimes with Aritzia older style stuff. It was very summery, light colored, perfect for a wedding or any like outdoor event. And I got it for a really good deal. So $45. I will accept. I think it's been listed for about a week. All right, next up is a two-piece bundle. Both of these shorts just listed last week. Both are Wilfred Montrouge shorts. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And they were both in a size medium. I had them listed at $55 each. She sent me an offer for, where does it say? For $80 for both, which I accepted. I was happy with that. Funny story, I had a really, crazy experience with an employee at a store while I was outsourcing and I am not going to name the store because I respect the store I enjoy shopping there and all the other employees are fabulous but this one employee I have never been treated like that so I was kind of grabbing a bunch of stuff right and I go to the till and I had various sizes and she looks and she's like hmm so she looks at the size and she's like oh size two and size 10 she's like that's strange she's like what are you doing selling them 
and I'm a really bad liar. I just avoid lying. I actually will just not say anything at all if I if I feel like I should be lying about something. And I just kind of laughed and I was like, yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> I, I literally didn't know what to say. Who says that to someone? She like looked at me, pursed her lips, wouldn't make eye contact with me, rang everything through. It like like the the temperature of the air changed. I was like, this is so awkward. Who does this? So I'm just like trying to small talk her, see if I can break the ice again. And I'm like, oh, your designer shelf is really full. They won't even acknowledge that I'm talking. Like putting all her effort into not acknowledging that I'm talking. And I was like, oh, wow. So there's another employee standing behind her and she just looks at me like, oh my gosh, this is going down. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing because I... I don't know. I was so embarrassed. Like I didn't even know what to say. So then they offer points and I had a question about my points at the end just to make to see how many I had and she's like your points aren't on your receipt. And I was like, "Well, that's like can you check?" And she's like, "I haven't entered your new points." And she was so like quick with me and I was like, "Okay." And she literally just was like turned around and started folding clothes and just dismissed me. Like, "Goodbye. See ya." I Little, like, I think I fluttered my eyes. Like, I was like, oh my gosh. I grab my receipt, I grab my clothes, I walk out of the store, and I'm like literally shaking because I was so angry. Like, who treats people like that? And then I got in my car and I actually went on to their Instagram account and I messaged them privately. One side of me wanted to go online and leave a really nasty review. And then part of me was like, I don't think the manager knows this is going on because I have dealt with the manager and she is the kindest person in the world. I did send a message to them. It took a little bit for them to get back, but she apologized. She was like, this is not how we train our employees, blah, blah, blah. Like it was a really good response. I was happy with it. She did check my points, everything was fine. But I was just so shook. Like I have never, I've never been treated like that in a store. It was really disheartening. And if it wasn't a store that I like so much enjoyed shopping in, I probably never would have gone back. I don't have a lot of choices here in Saskatoon and I don't wanna burn bridges, so I'm just gonna suck it up. Now, I went back there last week and the lady was there and I already could like feel my face turn red and I was like kind of anxious and I was like, who cares? Like, screw her. Like, don't let her get the best of you because you're running a business. Like, who cares? But man, I had to like pep talk myself in the store. I don't know. Have you guys ever had anything like that? Have you ever had an experience with an employee in a thrift store? I've never experienced that. And I just think I'm literally doing the same thing you are. You are buying clothes from people for a fraction of the price and you're selling it for like three times. How are we different? Like, please explain. And if you if you feel like that you can filter who shops in your store, so I can't shop in your store because I'm a reseller. Does that mean like people that make over a certain amount of money can't shop in your store? People that are dual incomes, you know, because they have more money than the person that's, that's a single income. Um, do people without kit, like how do you prioritize who gets to shop in your store and who doesn't? Because that's what I want to know. For like the sto store owners out there that are upset with resellers, where do you draw your line? Is it just us? Is it just us that can't shop there? Or do you like dismiss everyone? That's what I would like to know. All right. No more drama llama. I'm going to move on. That's my story of the week. Why? I just, yeah, I'm just blown away by that. <laughs> just, and I am like not even a mean person. Like I'm not a mean I mean shopper. I don't give people attitude. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. Oh, well, anyways. Okay. Next item that sold was a Lululemon sculpt tank top floral. This was in a size medium. There was no size tag. So I just based it on kind of measurements and it sold for $30. This is why I don't like grabbing Lululemon because I pay up a little bit more for these items and they just don't have the um, profit range that I want. Now, I have had this listed for probably two or three weeks. She sent me the offer. I accepted it. I'm going to get it going. I need to stop grabbing tank tops. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care how much I like them. I need to stop grabbing them because they don't give me the profit return that I want. And with the limited amount of hours I have to put into my business, I have to try and maximize the amount of money I'm making per hour of work like as much as possible. 
All right, next item to sell was a pair of Madewell jeans. These were high rise skinny in a size 25. This actually just sold today. I'm into today's sales right now. They sent me an offer for 40 bucks. I've had them listed for a couple weeks. I don't typically sell Madewell. I feel like maybe they're not as trendy as they used to be. And maybe because they were skinny, I'm not really sure. Maybe it was because they were a size 25, who knows? But I accepted the offer and I'm like, yeah, I will ship those out to you gladly. All right, we're down to the last few sales. So this is a big bundle, um, not a big bundle, but I think it's a high value bundle. It's sold for, let's just take a look. Oh yeah, she put the bundle together, sent me an offer for $100. In the bundle is a vintage 80s beige slip skirt. This was in a women's small. There was also a free people oversized knit sweater with alpaca and wool blend. Uh, this I had just thrifted and it was in a size small. I just, or just sourced it. And then the last item in this bundle is a pair of vintage brown leather heeled pumps in a women's size seven. I've had these for a good solid six months. So when I saw the bundle coming together, I was going to send her an offer for 120, which was pretty aggressive for the deal. But two of the items like the skirt and the shoes are older items. I've had them for a while. She sent me an offer for $100 and I was like, close enough. Sure, let's move these. Uh, I don't want to look at that skirt anymore and I'm happy to just kind of get it going on to its next home. That was great and uh, I am I was happy with what she offered. It was very reasonable. Last Poshmark sale, and this just went through like two hours ago, was a Lululemon Swiftly Tech Racerback shirt. This one sold for $31 and it was in a size eight. I actually grabbed this on a 90% off sale, so my cost of goods was super low, which I'm happy about. And again, not selling for much over $30, but I'll take it. I'll take it and I'll ship that out and stay away from tank tops. I wish that my stores had like dollar days or fill a bag day or like color tag days, we don't have any of that stuff. I just feel like my cost of goods is always higher, so I have to be really selective. A lot of the items that I talk about in my videos, if I don't grab them or I talk about profit margin, you can just scrap all of that if you have low cost of goods. Like by all means, if you're only paying a dollar or two dollars, grab tank tops. Like that's a good profit margin for you. But for what I pay, it's just not there. All right, this next sale, actually, I thrifted this a year ago and this one's on eBay. I kept it in my personal closet thinking that I would wear it. I just never go for it. So I was like, you know what? It's time to get this listed. I think I've had it on eBay maybe about a month. It's sold for $45 and it's a vintage fuzzy stone wash native art brown sweatshirt in a women's medium. That's like a typical eBay title. Oh my gosh. And they paid for shipping. So I've had questions before about shipping. I always do calculated shippings because I don't have access to a cross border courier or discounted shipping. Like pirate ship doesn't run out of my province. None of the like discount couriers really run in run it at all in my province. I've had other resellers that are like, I'm gonna find you one. And they message me a day later and they're like, I can't find you one. <laughs> oh, it's such a bummer, but whatever. You know what? I had someone tell me before, they were like, charge calculated, people will pay for it. And that's what I'm doing and it's right. Like people will pay if they want the item, they will pay for it. Now, I don't sell a lot of lower brand items or low low ticket price items so maybe that's the difference like people that want this want these items like want them and will pay for the shipping but it, it works well with my business model and then the last sale was on etsy and this is an item i have had for like probably a year and it was a vintage 90s ispo purple coach jacket in a size medium it sold for $50 and they paid calculated shipping. So that's awesome. Happy to see this one go and was definitely questioning this sale. I was actually going to pull it and take it to a buy sell trade store in a week or two. I have kind of like a little visual list of the items I want to pull. Happy I didn't. Came through for me. All right. That wraps up the sales for this last week. It's been a fantastic week. My ASP... Uh, right now, so average sale price is over $60 still, which is awesome. I feel like my cost of goods is running on average probably 15 to 20, maybe maybe even like 10 to 20. I don't want to say 
up to 25 because I have a very few items that I'm paying that much for, but definitely probably that 10 to $20 item. Now, because my ASP is shooting over 60, it's giving me a bigger profit margin. I have the capital in my business, and this is something I wanted to talk with you guys about. When I first started, I used to do like those quick flips, and I used to go to the bins, and I would sell a lot of things that were selling between $15 and $25, and it worked well. I made good money. I sold a lot of items, but I also worked my butt off. Like It was a lot to prep. Um, photograph, list, ship, like everything I was doing was just like tenfold. It felt like so much work. So I feel like it was probably last spring where I was like, okay, I'm going to make this change. I want to increase my ASP. And the biggest change I made then was that I started comp searching. I never used to comp search. I used to just grab things because I was getting them so cheap. Now, what I started doing was I would fill my cart with all the things that I thought. If I saw something I wanted to question, it doesn't matter. I threw it in my cart. Then once I'm done thrifting, I kind of go to the back corner and I go through them. Like there's things that I don't check comps on uh, because I know, but even at that, if you are not confident that that item is going to sell for X amount of dollars, you should check because there's lots of items that I think are going to sell for a good dollar that when I check the comp, I'm like, eh, <laughs> that's not that good. <laughs> I'm just going to hang that back up because I need to make money on these items. Over the last year I've been doing that, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp. I think I only maybe check comps on 25% of the items that I thrift. And uh, just because I have a year worth of checking comps that I have a good idea. Not saying, I still like even brands that I know, if it's a style I've never sold or something I'm not familiar with, I'm gonna check comps and see what they're selling for. Now, the next big change that I've made, and I think this is what's really pushed my sales past the point where they are like really pushed my sales um, is pushing that ASP higher, right? Increasing my profit margin. So now I'm starting to pay up even more for items. And there's, I talked about in the last video, there is lots of ways that you can source that isn't just thrift stores. And I think a lot of people start either at the bins or at thrift stores and that's kind of where you get your gears i think they're a great place to start also if you're trying to build that capital like if you can build that capital up so that you can start paying more for items and i think when you first start you're going to pay up on items that you're not going to get a big return on but the more you comp search those higher ticket items the more you have an idea of what you're looking for there is just so many places that you can get inventory and you need to look at what you have locally. I live in a small city. I don't have a lot of choices and I'm still able to find these items through different sources. I don't recommend, uh, what do they call like those surprise boxes that people sell? I do not recommend those. You don't hear very many good stories about those, especially if you're looking for quality pieces that you're gonna make money on. Get creative, find ways, but this next step that I'm in, which is increasing that average sale price and my profit margin, it's starting to work. It's just hard to wrap your brain around paying more for an item. You know what? We can all do our businesses different and still be successful. That's the best part about reselling. All right. I have talked a lot. I've gone over the sales, kind of my insight and in what's going on. I do feel like my Poshmark sales are back on this week, but who knows what next week brings, right? Like I feel like it's hot and cold, hot and cold. Who knows what's going to happen. All right, guys, I am out of here. I am wishing you many sales and I will see you next time. Bye. I've said it many times, I know.